uh, these questions to to our, our colleagues. Okay, thanks, Hannah, for for starting and welcome welcome to you all. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad to welcome uh, you to the third uh, conference of the cycle uh, Global Vision of Ukrainian Geology. Uh, I'm happy to introduce my Ukrainian colleague uh, and uh, their reports. The participant of uh, this conference, Ecological Aspects uh, in Geological Research, is a team of re researchers from leading uh, scientists and educational institution, uh, institutions in Ukraine. The main direction of research are marine geology, paleontology, ecology. Alexandra Alstinska, leader of this group, famous geologist, doctor in geology, head of Department of Modern Marine Sedimental Genesis, Institute of Geological Science, National Academy of Science of Ukraine. She is member of uh, the Specialized uh, Academic Council for the Defense of Thesis in the specialty, specialty Marine Geology at the Institute of Geological Science of Ukrainian National Academy. Uh, member of the additional uh, board uh, of International jour uh, Journal on LG, L Elgolo Elgology, member of the um, uh, editorial board of Geological Journal, Oceanographic um, Journal, Geology and the Minerals of the World Ocean Magazine. Yulia Timchenko is a PhD in geology, is a senior researcher in the Institute of Geological Science, Ukrainian Academy of Scientists. Uh, scientist field is uh, paleoceanography, micropaleontology, sedimentology, and marine geology. Uh, Anna Ivanova is PhD in geology, is a senior researcher of the Institute of Geological Science of Ukrainian Academy of Science. Uh, fields uh, are marine uh, uh, geochemistry and geology. Evgen Nasetkin is PhD in geology, scientist, uh, secretary of the World Ocean Research Council at the Presidium of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. He participated in seven voyages of uh, research uh, vessels, including five uh, um, Antarctic expedition. And Sergei Kadurin is a PhD in geology, associated professor of the Department of Marine Geology Hydrogeology, Engineering Geology, and Paleontology, Odessa Mechnikov National University. The first presentation is um, uh, the some result of oceanographic and marine geological studies of, of uh, Ukrainian researchers in the uh, Argentian uh, island waters, Sergei Kadurin. Odessa Mechnikov National University, Alexandra Alstinska, Evgen Nasetkin, Institute of Geological Science of the National Academy of Science. Please, uh, Sergei, you can start showing your presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, good morning for everybody. And let me introduce my presentation about our presentation about our first preliminary results of uh, marine geological study in Antarctica in uh, our station. Uh, actually, uh, that was a former British uh, Antarctical station called Faraday. Uh, it's located in, uh, in Antarctica Peninsula. It's uh, here is this small, uh, small Argentina Islands archipelago. And in Galindez Island, it's uh, location of our station. Now it's uh, our Ukrainian Antarctic station, Academic Vernadsky. And uh, all these uh, islands around, it's uh, <clears throat> archipelago, Argentina archipelago area. And uh, that's why uh, that is our first point of study. And also uh, we have um, that uh, calls Pen uh, Penola Strait between that archipelago and the uh, main continent, Ant Antarctic continent. So that's the second place of our study. And uh, <clears throat> the main goal of our work is a study of bottom relief morphology and uh, bottom sediments distribution within this Argentina Islands archipelago and around of all these areas. So the main task which we try to decide in that stage 
It was um, echo sounding of bottom uh, relief within Argentina Islands inside uh, uh, in uh, our archipelago, and also bot, uh, echo sounding and of bottom relief between Argentina Islands and the uh, uh, Antarctic Peninsula in that Pinola Strait because it's quite different uh, levels of depths uh, between islands and in the middle of islands the main depths of the sea it's nearly 50 30 meters but in Pinola Strait it's uh, nearly 400 300 meters so that's why it's quite different levels and different types of sedimentation also and uh, also we try to understand that distribution of bottom sediments uh, and we make our sampling in in Pinola Strait in deeper part and also between uh, Argentina islands also between these islands and uh, we try to decide <clears throat> we study diatoms uh, and uh, we try to make some conclusions about power paleoecological situation in that area uh, so uh, we start with bathymetrical study uh, so we use uh, echo sounder card plotter uh, Lawrence to understand that uh, sampling and you can see uh, the map of all our points of uh, destination and uh, points of um, detection that uh, depths uh, position of depths and after that uh, we make according to uh, using GIS programs we make uh, that uh, digital elevation model of underwater relief to understand that geomorphological situation under that all these areas uh, and also we use uh, for uh, uh, sampling we use grab uh, sample one win uh, grab sample with bottom coverage surface nearly uh, 0 0.1 meter square meter to samples uh, to take uh, samples from uh, present bottom uh, between the islands and you also can see that map of uh, sampling points between islands uh, as a result we have uh, that type of bathymetrical map uh, in uh, Argentina islands uh, archipelago you can see uh, in that map we understand that uh, there are some different like a paleo valleys like big structures with uh, uh, quite high depths nearly 50 60 meters and also different places where the depth uh, is less than 10 meters uh, less than 20 meters so we have some differentiation uh, according to depths directly in the middle of that archipelago uh also the, it's quite interesting shape or the main shape of all uh these uh, valleys and uh, all these uh, depressions between islands because uh the mainly uh, all these depressions has uh, quite steep slopes and quite flat uh, bottom and um so it allows us to understand that speciality of uh, uh, making this geomorphology according to geological understanding and according to geological background we can say that uh, that structure uh, all this area has some uh, has uh, some specialities and the main structures geological structures first of all it's a big uh, fault which goes through that uh, Pinola Strait and other and uh, in another side to Limier channel also and that's the main fault which uh, separate uh, different plate, uh, different parts of Antarctic plate at all. Uh, and also we understand that uh, area of uh, Argentina island archipelago also has some fault structures and block structures at all. And uh, all this sedimentation, uh, all present sedimentation, it's uh, connected with that main uh, tectonical framework uh, frame stretch structure of all this area in another hand uh, during the last uh, glacial maximum age uh, these large valleys uh, were completely occupied by ice flow and also we found that th that information from literature and we 
found uh, that like evidences uh, in our study of bottom relief. Uh, so we can expect that uh, ice erosion uh, should make this 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 that uh, special structure of underwater uh, valleys. Uh, our bathymetrical study and sampling in Pinola Strait uh, were made uh, was made uh, from our uh, research vessel Nosfera. Uh, and we and we make that sampling uh, using this uh, um, gravity core, and the uh, result of bathymetrical study shows that all this Pinola Strait uh, can be divided in two big depressions with uh, quite high uh, rocky ridge in the center. And uh, actually, uh, as you can see, even in the profile. As these uh, slopes of these under, underwater uh, depressions are quite steep uh, and uh, the bottom is quite flat. And we took uh, two samples from different uh, depressions and we try to study this uh, course from these different uh, places. Uh, that is that uh, these samples and this course from to these depressions from Penola Strait. Uh, according to lithology, we can say mainly uh, all samples it's uh, silty mud with uh, sand admixture and with some uh, pieces, some fragments of uh, rocks uh, which can uh, come there uh, from uh, surrounding islands. So uh, in one place we have uh, the core nearly uh, 0 0.5 meters. And uh, from another place in deeper part of Penola Strait, we took a sample nearly one meter, uh, that core, uh, one meter core. Uh, study, uh, we use uh, diatomic analysis to understand uh, what we have in that area at all. And, uh, Actually, uh, we can say that uh, 72 uh, different, uh, uh, 76 species of diamond, uh, diatoms have been uh, identified from core uh, 362. Uh, diatomics are uh, widely used uh, as indicators for modern and past archaeological conditions based on their good preservation potential and their frequent uh, occurrence uh, diatoms are particularly used as uh, paleo, uh, proxies in the highest latitudes and coastal regions. Uh, the most numerous species uh, is uh, uh, Thalassiosira antarctica, nearly 40%, and Thalassiosira uh, lentigiosa, uh, nearly uh, 3%. Uh, uh, Thalassiosira antarctica is divided into two species, uh, separate uh, varieties based on morphological types. Uh, there is a warm species uh, with valve diameter greater than uh, 20 microns and cold species which valve diameter less than uh, uh, 20 microns. Warm species uh, prevailed in, in a rate 4 to 1. Uh, Talisiosira antarctica is an Antarctic diatom associated with uh, sea ice and low sea surface temperatures. Uh, living in waters with high uh, concentration of sea ice, but rare in uh, sea ice. Uh, Telesiosira uh, lenticiosa is found in almost all samples. Uh, maximum abundance of uh, Telesiosira lenticiosa uh, species are found with a uh, winter edge of the sea ice maximum. Uh, Fcampia antarctica is uh, common in many Antarctic regions and in the Southern Ocean at all. Uh, the, the distribution of uh, F, uh, Fcampia antarctica is uh, associated with an erratic environment uh, with the presence of floating ice. 
the increased occurrence of uh, F. campia Antarctica might be regarded as an individual uh, indicator of uh, relatively warmer climatic conditions with uh, prevailing uh, stratified water columns. The genesis uh, Fragilariopsis includes four species. Lagiriopsis uh, kergelensis is uh, can, uh, considered endemic in the southern ocean waters uh, and uh, often dominates in uh, complexes of the open ocean zone uh, south to the pole, uh, polar front. Uh, Flagiriopsis curta occurs commonly in ice edge uh, and in meltwater strait stratified water uh, layers uh, associated with uh, retreating sea ice. Uh, uh, such uh, characteristic species as uh, Paralia, uh, Actin Actinocyctus, uh, Ukrainian gives it up. Oh, yes. Uh, Adantella legiosa and Adantella vive uh, logi uh, are found in uh, nautical amount uh, through the section of the core bottom sediments. Uh, uh, Panola Strait sediments contains a large uh, group of species of genesis uh, coconuts. Uh, coconut species genesis are included uh, in uh, epiphytic uh, associated and are associated with uh, thinking of mussels and uh, macroalgae. And also you can see other detected diatom species from Penola straight bottom sediments here on that slide also. And uh, as uh, first our preliminary con conclusion, we can say that uh, uh, we start our work uh, in these years and we expect that uh, we prolong that work in the next years also. And uh, in that side, in that time, we can say that uh, we found different morphology, geomorphological uh, situations and uh, geomorphological environment situations in the bottom. And uh, we found and we detect areas where we can expect quite high amount of uh, present accumulations. Uh, and also, uh, we, we understand for now, for us, uh, we understand the structure of uh, Pinola Strait. We understand that uh, Pinola Strait, it's in one side, it's an area of uh, uh, main fault structure in that area. And in another side, it's also the place uh, where was the uh, uh, big uh, gl glacier in the last glacier maximum. And also combination of all these two processes and tectonical process and also uh, ice glacier erosion and ice glacier sedimentation is also uh, combinated in one place in one uh, Pinola Strait. And also quite, uh, it, should, it should be somewhere uh, presented in uh, thickness and in uh, sequence of uh, sediments, marine sediments. And also we found a big amount and a big distribution of uh, microfauna, uh, like uh, diatoms. And now we found uh, different species. Uh, we found some distribution of these species. And uh, now we study uh, this, uh, uh, diatoms and we try to make some understanding, some uh, paleoecological reconstruction uh, based on uh, uh, this uh, study of diatoms. And now what we can say in that stage, we can say uh, that uh, according to this distribution of diatoms, uh, we have uh, ice sea, uh, sea ice, uh, and we have some distribution of uh, sea ice in that area, and uh, that's why we expect we uh, will take in the future we will take a, a bigger course and uh, can make our interpolation in uh, geological history uh, along there. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, yeah. dear Sergei. Uh, maybe uh, I suggest to start the discussion after uh, listening of the old reports. Okay.
Okay. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next speaker is Anna uh, Ivanova. Uh, monitoring of uh, suspended matter uh, within uh, the Parisian region, the main trends. Uh, Evgenia Setkin, Alexandra Alstenska, Anna Ivanova, Institute of Geological Science of the National Academy of Science uh, of Ukraine. Please. Анна, мы вас не чуем. Окей. Добрый день, дорогие коллеги. Let me first thank the European scientific community for supporting Ukraine and Ukrainian science in the most difficult time for our country. We really appreciate and feel your support. Thank you for your opportunity to make uh, the presentation in this meeting. Uh, my presentation is monitoring of suspended matter within the Parisia region, the main trends. Uh, it was worked up in the Department of Modern Marine Sediment Genesis of Institute of Geological Science of National Academy of Science of Ukraine. And uh, this work has uh, ecological uh, direction. Uh, in geological history, exogenous uh, processes have played a huge role in the formation of uh, Earth's surface. Transport of sedimentary matter by air and water flows uh, along with the natural mechanism plays one of the, the main role of this process. But today, the natural mechanism of transit of uh, sedimentary flows uh, acquiring the negative content because uh, it uh, can carry substances of various technogenic process in the atmosphere and aquatic environment. Uh, let me say that we began our work 19 years ago, and the first monitoring, monitoring point was organized on the basis of a kinographic platform which belongs to National Academy of Science of Ukraine in the Black Sea. It's situated 400 meters from uh, the southern bank of Crimea. So you see how we organized our monitoring observation. We installed uh, two um, types of sediment traps on the canographic uh, plat uh, platform. In the desk, we installed uh, the um, uh, traps for, uh, for sampling the solid component of aerosol for vertical and horizontal airflows. And the, in the bottom column, we, we uh, settled uh, two um, sediment traps for su suspended matter. Uh, I don't stop on, the res on, on our results because in 1940, after an action of Crimea Pen Peninsula by the Russia Federation, we lost the opportunity to continue our observation. And it was decided to reorganize uh, observation uh, point in another region of uh, Ukraine. We chose uh, the Zaporizhia region. Uh, why Zaporizhia? Because Zaporizhia occupies a leading position in Ukraine among uh, industrially loaded meteorological centers. Uh, significant concentration of enterprises of pharaohs, non pharaohs, metallurgy, the me mechanical engineer uh, is situated here. It causes, uh, in some areas of the city, an intensity emission of number of microelements into environmental, including iron and uh, heavy metals. So you see where the, our monitoring point is situated. And this uh, is the uh, districts where uh, the, uh, the enterprises are concentrated. Uh, the new research is aimed at studying the quantitative and qualitative characteristics of the substances of atmospheric and river, uh, and river flows within this area. Uh, scientific tasks included monthly observation 
uh, mostly sampling of uh, solid component of aerosol, uh, river suspension, single samples of uh, ground sediments and bottom sediments. Uh, then we made a granulometric uh, mineralogical analysis. Um, investigate trace element uh, elements, uh, 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 chemical composition of the samples, microprop analysis. Uh, during our um, uh, study, we took to the, to the consideration uh, meteorolo meteorological uh, parameters as uh, wind uh, velocity, wind directions, duration of these winds, and uh, the days with precipitation. Uh, precipitations. Then the results uh, are passed to the database uh, uh, worked out in the base of our department. Uh, during our uh, study, we use two types of sediment traps. First is uh, the sediment traps for uh, suspended matter in aquatic uh, environment and the uh, trap for solid component of uh, atmospheric aerosol. We used them in, uh, on a canographic uh, platform, but uh, in Zaporozhye, we make upgrade of this uh, equipment and obtained Ukrainian patent for this. Uh, we installed these uh, traps in the birth of uh, um, uh, Hydrophysical Center of National Academy, Academy of uh, Ukraine. This is uh, a result trap, and this is a set for suspended matter. So some of us of our results. You see the typical component is the same images, a typical component of aeolian substances. Uh, this is uh, uh, the fragment of of quartz grain, uh, the debris of feldshare grain, uh, plant pollen. But if you look at the general image, uh, you can see the significant number of spherical formation, uh, which we um, uh, determine as uh, anthropogenic. This is the image of big spherical formation, small spherical formation. Uh, there are two com components uh, um, of uh, two anthropogenic, uh, two types of anthropogenic spherules. First, it's uh, iron spherules, uh, and uh, these uh, iron spherules are the most uh, common com anthropogenic component in the environments where their uh, enterprises are situated. We found them not only in uh, the uh, solid component of atmospheric aerosol, but in uh, the suspended matter of uh, Dnieper River, but also in the bottom sediments, in the river drifts, uh, and other. Uh, this uh, heterogeneous or iron spherules are particularly unstable to, to environmental factors and uh, uh, exposed to decomposition process, especially in the river environment. Oxidation and uh, other um, changes in, uh, in such formation can, can, can affect the ecological state of the environment since uh, some of toxic elements are able to go into the ionic state, forming the composition of uh, natural water. The second category of suspended matter component is uh, aluminum silicate spherules consist of, consisting of uh, aluminum oxide. Uh, they are also potential results of high temperature process of human production activity. Uh, it's uh, thermal power operation, metallurgical and other related industries. Uh, the mineral composition of these spherules, approximately 70 persons, is represented by aluminum silicates with an admixture of iron and sometimes uh, micro impurements of heavy metals, mostly zinc and copper. The average size uh, is one from 1 to uh, 20 microns, but individual spherules can reach uh, 50 microns. Uh, one of the features of this aluminum silicate spherule 
is their discontinuous structure. They are usually hollow inside and they differ from iron uh, spherules. Uh, we call them cenospheres, and the, the formation occurs at the part of the fly ash in the furnace of thermal power plants and in a hydroelectric plant during high temperature burning of coal. Uh, during the combustion, combustion of finely divided coal particles, impurements of uh, silicates, which take uh, a spherical shape in the molten state. Uh, due to the gases dissolved in the silicates, uh, such as nitrogen, oxygen, carbon oxide, spherical micro drops of molten silicates blow up into um, such microspheres. This, uh, the third component of the technogenic origin is the river suspension uh, of, of uh, river and air suspension is clastic fragments of iron oxide. It uh, represented by significant range of dimension from five microns till uh, 70 microns. These metal berry grains uh, contain micro impurements of different uh, metals such as copper, chrome, nickel, titanium, zinc, and others. Uh, according uh, to micro probe analysis uh, of its chemical composition, uh, content of iron oxide can exceed those, uh, 19%. Uh, the, uh, this, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, it's uh, the second or the, the third, um, the third component, or uh, the third component uh, of Pythagoric original is river in, in, in this, is, in, sorry, the presence uh, in this suspended matter, a significant amount of detrital component. Uh, are typical for average indicators of the soil cover in the study area can testify the active introduction of formation which are the results of anthropogenic activity. I said above that we take took to the into consideration the meteorological state of the in, inside uh, of the study area. Uh, this is the average. Uh, the, uh, this is the average diagram of monthly distribution of the main component of the river suspension, uh, and the distribution of iron, some dangerous trace elements in the atmospheric aerosol, river suspension, bottom sediments, uh, coastal sands, and um, so on. Uh, we took into the consideration a set of the um, meteorological state, and you see the diagram. A comparison diagram of dynamic of distribution of suspended matter and monthly distribution of the wind speed. Uh, suspended matter tend uh, to change the dimension, man, mineral and chemical composition and different time intervals. It depends on number of external influence, uh, which are associated with biological cycles, the redistribution of the wind's velocity through the year, uh, the duration and frequency of precipitations, and, and so on, the snow cover, and so on. And the maximum concentration of pollutants, pollutants uh, tend to find dispress, dispress uh, fraction. So the obtained data, uh, so the obtained data, data indicate a significant influence of meteorological industry on chemical composition of air and Dnieper river suspension within the Parisia region. We compare uh, the um, iron, compa iron uh, containing particles in our samples with uh, the matter um, from the filtered out, uh, from the filtered from uh, enterprises. Uh, of meteorological of meteorological uh, industries. Mm -hmm. uh, this comparison show that the most active uh, inflow in the environment occurred due to the uh, preparation and smelting of iron ore. Each type of process emission at the enterprises of the meteorological complex of the city is characterized by different types of solid particles. And morphological characteristics 
characteristic of this particle of particles which we sample of the uh, and uh, and each particles of technological component in suspension made us possible to determine its genetic affiliation to various technological processes for preparation processing of iron ore uh, in, in that enterprises. Uh, besides, we found uh, some diatom virus, not only in uh, suspended river, river matter, but also in uh, the uh, samples from uh, atmospheric aerosol. It's a valve of uh, coconut valve and its chemical composition. Um, so, um, what I should mention, uh, I represent you the results of, of our study till 1991. Last year, uh, due to the war um, in the Ukraine, uh, we uh, restart our examination only in, in May because uh, the part of uh, Zaporozhye uh, region is occupied by the Russian Federation, uh, but uh, the primary research which we obtained last year uh, revealed a number of interesting changes in the intensity of sediment substances accumulation and its uh, component composition. We believe that after our victory, we can uh, continue our examination and more high level. Dear Collins, thank for your attention and your support. And this is uh, some pictures, some images from the Blossom Spring Kiev. Thank you again. Thank you, Hanna. Thank you very much. And the um, uh, next uh, presentation is uh, early uh, Colotsen uh, transgression in uh, bays and lagoons, the Black Sea Northwestern Shelf, Alexandra Alstenska, Yulia Timchenko, Institute of Geological Science of the National Academy of Science of Ukraine. Just a moment. Okay. Just a moment. Yeah, Sorry, colleagues. Юля, Юля, да. можливо, я завантажу і буду гортати презентацію. Давай, давай, якщо, да, є, давай. Давайте, давай. якщо є проблема. Да, да, будь ласочка. Зараз, тепер нам треба ван мінець.
Юлія, можемо починати? Юлія, можемо починати? Так, так. Я готова. Будь ласка, Юлія. Sorry, sorry. Um, I want to present uh, our research uh, about paleoceanography of the uh, Black Sea. Um, is uh, our research is aimed to studying the paleoceanographic environments in the Ukrainian part of the Black Sea on the Western Shelf and continental slope based on diatom analysis. Uh, diatoms are unicellular or photosynthetic organisms that live in any aquatic environment. Due to the sensitivity to change in environmental parameters, diatoms make it possible to reconstruct pollutionographic conditions such as temperature, salinity, hydrodynamics, uh, and others. Uh, next, please. Uh, there are selected several studied areas for a demonstration. In the upper part of the continental slope, uh, the first site, in the inner part of the shelf, uh, the second site, and the coastal zone, uh, the sites uh, uh, three and four. Next, please. The environmental conditions of the modern Black Sea, littoral and sublittoral, were formed as a, as a result of the early Holocene transgression. The Paleoceanographic conditions in the late Pleistocene and Holocene changed significantly and rather rapidly during the new Xenian transgression about 10,000 years before present. This ecological transformation is clearly seen such in the shallow area of the modern shelf as in the deep part of the sea. Uh, in the pictures, you can see a modern Black Sea and uh, uh, the New Euphysian Sea Lake, um, about uh, 10, um, 12,000 uh, years before present. Next, please. Our studies showed uh, that uh, the New Euphysian and uh, Holocene environments can be determined by the taxonomic composition of datum associations and the ecological features. Uh, features so, uh, sorry. Um, for the site uh, one, in the deep sea area, transgressive event caused a shift from brackish freshwater sedimentological conditions of the new Evskinian sea lake by uh, modern marine ones. For the sites uh, two, three, and four, in the coastal part of the sea littoral, the progressive rise in sea level has led to a mosaic combination of lagoonal, lagoon marine, estuarine, and marine sedimentological conditions in the shelf zone. Next, please. Uh, for the first site, late place to see brackish water lacustrian diatoms were studied from the bottom sediment core. 84, located within the continental slope of the Black Sea on the western shelf. At the end of the late Pleistocene, an endemic taxonomically homogeneous uh, brackish water diatom flora developed within the basin of the Black Sea Lake. Next, please. Due to the dominance of two brackish freshwater species of the genus Stephanodiscus, it is uh, called the Stephanodiscus horizon. Now it is a biostratigraphic marker of the new Euxinian sedimentary top. In uh, two pictures, you can see two species of uh, Stephanodiscus uh, genus, characteristic for the uh, new Euxinian Black Sea Lake. Uh, the Stephanodiscus horizon can be traced throughout the late Pleistocene sediments within the Black Sea in the shelf and continental slope uh, 
which indicates a little difference in hydrology and salinity. Next, please. Uh, the uh, constant component of the uh, complexes is such species as Avalocasera granulata, uh, Pantochiquiella kitzingiana, Elebecchia arenaria, Diplonase dumbletensis, Cerrella libril, and other. Uh, these taxa are indicators of predominantly brackish water, moderately cold water conditions. The complexes are characterized by the dominance of plankton. The new species, Cimatoplevra evxinica, is one of the benthos uh, components. In our opinion, this species is a new marker of the Black Sea upper Pleistocene top. Next, please. Site 2. The Holocene transgression had an effect on the coastal plain of modern Northwest Shelf. In Core 60 and 1, the upper New Exenian deposits are successively replaced by Holocene ones with typical lagoonal marine diatoms. Their diatom assemblages is taxonomically diverse with large sized wolves. It showed that at the beginning of the Holocene, there were conditions of a lagoon or bay with the development of epiphytics and a good preservation. Next, please. You can see a characteristic datum assemblage of the lower Holocene sediments in the northwestern inner shelf. Groups of brackish water marine epiphytes and epipelon dominate. The presence of a significant amount of marine plankton indicates a depth of more than five meters and free water exchange. The early Holocene assemblage composition indicates its formation in the calm uh, shelf conditions with a low hydrodynamic. According to the atom data, after the early Holocene, lagoon conditions changed to an active hydrodynamic regime and sea level rise with the predominance of marine plankton. Next, please. We have chosen two sites of the northwestern shelf, site three and uh, site four, which in the early Holocene represented a coastal plain uh, drained by some rivers. Gradual salinization of Lemans and Asteris led to success, uh, successive uh, changes in the composition and ecological features of datum assemblages. Um, site three, the Paleo-Kalanchak Valley, now northern coast of the Karkenit Bay near Jarelgach Island. Site four, the Paleo-Dnipa Valley, now an open part of the northwestern shelf. Uh, the presence at this time in modern shelf sites of the river valley or estuary and uh, liman or pond is uh, confirmed by lithological data. Next, please. Uh, sediment course uh, 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 334 allocated uh, in the Karkinid Bay, the northwestern shelf of the Black Sea, uh, site uh, three. Two sediment cores were taken from a depth uh, 13 or 14 uh, meters in the northern part of Karkinit Bay near Jeralgach Island. Based on the vertical sequence of datum assemblages, a change in the near shore environment conditions is traced here. Next, please. Uh, for the uh, site four, for the reconstruction of the Black Sea coastal environments, um, the method of quantitative diatom analysis was carried out. Based on the factors life form and salinity tolerance, we results of, uh, the results of the diatom analysis were synthesized in the form of percentage diagrams uh, for ecological groups. Uh, the uh, paleo-oceanography interpretation is based on the trend of relative abundance of ecological groups of diatoms. The vertical succession of the diatom 
ecological groups made it possible to reconstruct the vertical and aggressive for transformation of pearl environments in the Krakenid Bay, northern coastal part. Next, please. All the late place to see uh, epiphytic life uh, uh, on microfits. They are characteristic of shallow low dynamic environments uh, with low range of salinity, freshwater lagoon, and lakes. Uh, uh, this for the site uh, on um, Kalanchak River. For the site uh, on Dnipa River, um, ecological uh, structure and diatomic compositions indicate the conditions of Liman or lake uh, uh, or pond with a salinity of up to um, to uh, pro mile and a depth of more than uh, two meters. Next, please. Uh, in the early Holocene, these sites um, present uh, the low part, uh, uh, present some assemblages with a mixture of uh, epiphytes, epipelon, and aerophilus. Such ecological groups can be found in shallow ponds uh, with low salinity and periodic flooding. Diatoms uh, show a gradual disappearance of freshwater species from bottom to top. Next, please. Um, in the early middle Holocene, in uh, this two sites, uh, we can see uh, marine brackish uh, pylon. Uh, uh, there are characteristic of shallow lagoons and estuaries. These ecological groups occur in mud flats with shallow, clear water. In the uh, uh, littoral um, data assemblages are characterized by disappearance of freshwater species and appearance marine ones in plankton. Uh, uh, in the picture, we can see um, the early middle Holocene diatoms of northern shores of the Kerkinid Bay. Kerkinid Bay. Um, next, please. The um, assemblages, uh, diatom assemblages of the late Holocene in two sites, uh, characterized by marine plankton. Um, major uh, autochthonic groups is uh, marine brackish epipelon. Um, uh, next, please. Uh, this is a um, characteristic diatom uh, complex uh, of the northern shores uh, of Karkinid Bay, um, characteristic for uh, now shores. And uh, uh, next, conclusions. Um, the ecological structure of studied diatom assemblages made it possible to characterize the natural conditions in which the sediment accumulated with the microplanetological material. It indicates salinity of the basin, depth, uh, illumination, um, currents, uh, uh, water transparency, etc. According to our studies, three levels of the upper Pleistocene and Holocene deposits in the Black Sea of the western part have clear and recognizable uh, paleoceanographic markers. The first, uh, about 10, uh, 12, uh, a thousand uh, years before present. On the inner shelf and continental slope, the coastal part of the late Pleistocene New Xinxia Lake is determined by the distribution of a specific uh, diatom complex. It is characterized by the predominance of brackish uh, freshwater species, such as Stephanodiscus robustus and Stephanodiscus rotula, as well as the endemic Cimatopleura euxinica. Uh, these taxa are indicators of uh, predominantly brackish water, moderately cold water conditions. And next, please. Um, the second, um, for the modern shelf zone, there are brackish fresh, freshwater riverine or lacustrine associations were widespread in the rivers and lakes of the late Pleistocene coastal plate. 
At the beginning of the Holocene, they were replaced by assemblages of shallow ponds with low saline water, irregular flooding, and a gradual disappearance of freshwater species. At the same time, at the beginning of the Holocene, lagoonal diatom associations were formed in the northwestern coastal littoral in the conditions of a low dynamic hydrological regime. And this had uh, four pre uh, present uh, um, assemblages. After the early Holocene, the coastal part of the northwestern Black Sea changed uh, with the gradual rise in the sea level and an increasing in salinity. On modern diatom data, there are conditions of marine littoral in the middle late Holocene with water salinity of 15, 17 um, per mile. Uh, uh, thank you for attention. Uh, uh.